Welcome to It's a Crime, I'm Lyndon. Today I'm gonna to give you another update on the Chad Daybell case. There's chatter on Chad and Lori. Chad has entered a plea, news about Colby Ryan, and also news about Chad's lawyer. But before I get into it, if you'd like to be part of the It's a Crime community, please click that subscribe button below, click that notification bell, make sure you click it to all so you could be notified of my next upcoming videos, my live streams, and my community posts. If you like this video, please support it and please share this out where you can. Now, let's get into it. So Chad Daybell's lawyer, John Pryor, has filed a not guilty plea for Chad. In the document, it says, you will please take notice that John Pryor hereby enters his appearance as the attorney of record for the defendant in the above entitled action. The defendant hereby enters a plea of not guilty to the charges in the above entitled matter and hereby requests a pre-trial and a jury trial. And as we know, Chad has been charged with two counts of destruction, altering or concealment of evidence. Now I do have to bring this up because I do scoff at this. When Chad appeared in court last week, one of the things that Chad's lawyer says, John Pryor, was about Chad not fleeing. He says there's nothing as far as I'm concerned in his history that indicates that he's going to flee the jurisdiction. When police showed up at his house last night, actually it was in the morning, Mr. Daybell didn't flee, Mr. Daybell didn't abscond, and Mr. Daybell didn't run. Well, you know me in patterns, and you know I like to dig. So let's bring up the pattern of Chad and let's take a little trip down memory lane. On November 26th, authorities showed up to Lori's place for a welfare check. It was reported that Chad Daybell was there and let's read his history. On November 26, 2019, Detective Hermesio and Detective Hope from the RPD went to Lori's home located at 565 Pioneer Road, number 175, Rexburg, Idaho, to conduct a welfare check. Detectives Hermesio and Hope met with Lori's brother Alex Cox and Chad Daybell outside the residence. Chad acted as if he didn't know Lori very well and stated he didn't know her phone number. Alex told the detectives that JV, Joshua Vallow, was with his grandma, Kay Woodcock, in Louisiana, which was not likely to be true due to the fact that Kay was the individual who first called in a missing child report to the Gilbert Police Department. Alex said Lori may be in apartment 107. Hermesio and Hope went to apartment 107, but the apartment was completely empty and vacant. At this time, they called me and asked me to come to the premises to help search for Joshua Vallow. Shortly after calling me, Detective Hermesio called me again and indicated that he saw Chad Daybell driving a black Chevrolet Equinox away from the residence. Detective Hermesio stopped Chad and asked him again if he had seen Joshua Vallow. Chad responded that the last time he had seen JV was in apartment 107 in October. He also admitted he knew Lori Vallow's phone number and provided it to Detective Hermesio. So let's point a few obvious things out. Chad was already married to Lori for a few weeks at this point, yet he tells detectives that he doesn't know Lori's number, probably since she has so many phones. And he didn't act like he really even knew Lori very well. Alex and Chad point the detectives to apartment 107, which is Alex's apartment. Then Chad climbs into his vehicle and leaves, but the detectives stop him and ask him again about JJ. He then admits to knowing Lori's phone number and gave it to the detective. Now, if your wife's child is missing, would you hop in your truck and drive away? Let's just marinate on that, as both Melanie Gibb and Melanie Pulowski would say. Now let's look at the court document about Lori and Chad, and it says RPD believed that she left Rexburg with Chad Daybell the night of November 26, 2019. Melanie Boudreau later confirmed that Chad and Lori did leave Rexburg the night of the 26th, which coincidentally was the night of the welfare check and the authorities coming to their home. So there's some history of Chad fleeing out of town, but maybe that's, maybe that's not much of an example. So let's use the word abscond because he says Mr. Daybell didn't abscond. According to the dictionary, abscond means leave hurriedly and secretly, typically to avoid detection of or arrest for an unlawful action such as theft and others. So, 
back to the court documents, RPD has verified that Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow flew from the Los Angeles, California airport to Kauai on American Airlines on December 1, 2019. This information was obtained through a search warrant served on American Airlines. So Lori and Chad take off on the welfare check. He didn't flee. He took off. That's a different word. Then they hop a flight to Hawaii from Los Angeles on December 1st and evade the authorities for quite some time. Now, one of the things I'm questioning is why didn't Lori and Chad just stay in Hawaii when they went and got married in November? Because they got married November 5th. Why did they come back? What did they come back that they needed to do? And because it makes me think they still had a mission to accomplish. What was that mission? Just something I'm putting out there and thinking about. Now let's talk about the most recent of events for Chad and not fleeing. On the 9th of June, the day that they found Tylee and JJ on his property, buried, he sat in his truck watching while the authorities searched the property and dug. As soon as they hit on the remains, Chad flees the area and the authorities actually step on the gas to go get him. And I did talk about that in one of my previous videos, but he didn't flee. So there's a little history of good old Chad running away and possibly fleeing. So in case you need a little brush up on history, Mr. Pryor, there you, there you have it. Speaking of Chad's lawyer, looks like he can empathize with Chad because he's been to jail for 120 days. You may or may not have heard of that. This happened back in 2012, and I decided to read up a little bit on his trial. And it says an attorney accused of assaulting a woman at his Nampa law office is facing trial this week on a charge of battery with intent to commit a felony. And prosecutors claim John Pryor, who's 50 at the time, of Meridian, tried to have sex with a woman who rebuffed his advances during a May 31st, 2011 incident. And the alleged victim, a 20-year-old woman, told jurors that Pryor offered her money, employment, and assistance in a legal case if she would have sex with him. She testified that when she rejected Pryor's advances, he attempted to force himself on her. So what it's saying is that the woman had come into his office to talk to him about a job and discuss a child custody case. And this all went down. It says he pled guilty to a reduced charge of misdemeanor battery, was sentenced to 120 days in jail, 100 days suspended, and 30 days discretionary, and fined $137.50. So there's that. Now let's talk about Lori. There has been some chatter, actually, both for Lori and Chad, but someone emailed me and said, that Scott Reich was talking about it on his channel about Lori and I did check it out. And if you haven't checked out Scott Reich's channel, you definitely have to check it out. It's called Crime Talk. And he was saying that there's chatter about people saying that Lori was on the property with a ball cap on leading the authorities to the spot where JJ and Tylee were found. I do not know if that's true or not but this is what the chatter is about. I will find out or try and find out and you know I'll bring you the truth. The other chatter is about Chad possibly being involved in a case previously uh, that had to do with his days of being a grave digger. I am currently looking at that too. The case is of Kiplin Davis, I believe her name is. So I'll keep you also up to date on that if I find anything out, that's a for sure. Now, one of the things I do want to bring up is back on Lori's podcast back in December 2018, she talked about how suffering leads to salvation and that even though she doesn't want her kids to suffer, she understands that they have to in order to see the light. And this was actually in an email and it was shown on the news. Now, this was a year before the kids' death. And this is also two months after she met Chad Daybell in person. And I've said this before, I mean, what the heck happened? 
everyone said prior to 2018, Lori was an outstanding mother. She was the fun mom. She did so much for her kids. 2018 comes, everybody's saying she's lost her marbles. Uh, I mean, clearly something happened for all this to go down and she met Chad and, and his teachings and all that. So, I mean, I don't know. It's just what the heck happened. And I want to talk about Kobe Ryan. That's Lori's oldest child and now only living child. And Colby was seen at Chad's property visiting the memorial set up for Tylee and JJ. And I can't even begin to imagine what Colby is going through. He has lost his stepdad, Charles, in July. Lost his sister, Tylee, and his brother, JJ. And his mom, Lori, pretty much. Life will never be the same for him and he was seen at Chad's property and here's what him and his wife Kelsey posted at the memorial to my beautiful little brother and sister we will never forget you this is not the end you will have justice and we will meet again in paradise I love you so much rest in peace and also Colby shared photos of him in an Instagram post and he said this I don't even know how to start this, but to my beautiful, amazing, sweet angels, the only peace I have is knowing you are in paradise. I'm broken over this. To not see your beautiful faces, hear your voices, or know that I can't hug you or see you kills me. I will never let anyone forget you. I have prayed that I could be with you again, and one day that will be true. I have more love for both of you than you could ever know. I miss you both. I love you both. This seems like a nightmare. It seems unreal. You were taken from all of us. You both touched so many lives. You impacted so many people. That will never go away. Just know I will carry you every day and everywhere I go. My daughter will always know how lucky she is to have you both watching over her. Tylee and Joshua, I will never be able to express my love for you, but know this, I'm still here for you. I will always wish I could have traded places with you but I'll never let you be forgotten. With all of my love to you both, forever you're in our hearts. And you can see Colby has been speaking out to his mom in his YouTube channel, and I will put that in the links below. He was urging her to just do the right thing, come forward, do the right thing, and there's several videos of him. And he also gave a recent video to JJ wishing him a happy birthday. He would have been eight, but we didn't know until June 9th what really happened. And Colby has been lied to. Lori lied to him about Charles and how he died. She said he had a heart attack, which we know that's not true. At the end of August, Lori went and visited Colby and said she was moving. She didn't say that she was moving to Rexburg and then took off there with both Tylee and JJ. Colby still was left in the dark. She didn't tell Colby that she got married. She didn't even tell Colby that she was with Chad Daybell. And she also texted Colby back and forth pretending to be Tylee. So the betrayal from his mother, even just lying to him, is incredibly painful. And now to find out that his siblings are not only gone, but they're gone forever. And the manner in which they were found. How could you ever move on from that? How could you not be in excruciating pain? So I am thankful that he has family still with Kelsey and his daughter. And I know he did issue a statement with Larry and Kay Woodcock, so I'm sure they have them as well. Now, something important is Colby has a GoFundMe set up by Kelsey's mom, and it was set up at the end of January. And it says, there are things they have been going through that most don't know about, and it's not something they are proud of to put out there in the public, so we have held off, but they are at a breaking point and have decided with much prompting from those of us closest to them to just tell it and do a GoFundMe, so here it is. They are newlyweds with a baby about to turn one. 
Colby has been their sole support because they have a child with medical needs. Colby's mom, Lori, has not spoken to him through any of this and they can't even explain how bad things have gotten, to not know if his siblings are dead or hidden somewhere. The constant battle with trying to process emotions for the worst news possible and trying to stay hopeful at the same time is a special hell to try to walk out daily. Then to have your mom in zero contact with you and no way to talk to her, hence the YouTube videos we all hope will somehow reach her maybe via the local news or something. These kids have lost their cars, one was taken by police for evidence and the other was in Lori and Charles's name and the payments had not been made in months. Colby lost his job due to all of this, his credit has been ruined and they have been hounded and stalked by reporters on a daily basis. This has been like living in a nightmare that won't go away. They need help so please find it in your heart to help in some way. If you haven't been part of their life, then you don't know what they are going through, but we have been walking this with them and it's been very, very tough. They need help getting a vehicle so he can work. Colby has been concerned with trying to keep his family safe and that has been a priority, but he's been doing everything he can behind the scenes to help bring his siblings home. He has felt helpless through this whole ordeal, so maybe as a community, we can help these kids get through this and fight to find his siblings. There are a lot of ways to help, even if it's not with donations. They could use some groceries or diapers, etc. They can use prayer, warriors, and love and support. If you can help, please do so. If not financially, please help share and pray, and anything else you can do is greatly appreciated. So that was written in January, and there was an update made in March when Lori was in court. It says another quick update again thank you very much for those of you that have donated to the GoFundMe. We are here in Rexburg right now. Colby and Kelsey were at the hearing yesterday for his mom. This has been a tough trip. The donations helped him be able to come here. We thank you so much. There is a still a long road ahead but we pray every day that continued progress is made. Again thank you for the donations and please continue to pray with us. So the link will be in the description below if you would like to contribute, as well as I will put the link in the pinned comment. I am waiting to find out if they have an Amazon link or a wish list or anything like that, as they did mention diapers and groceries. And I will update the pinned comment in, in the description as well when and if I get that. So as of this recording, the GoFundMe is at $3,775 for a $7,500 goal. And like I said, this has been since January. So if you do wish to donate, it's in the link below. Now I will say a little bit about Chad's kids, even though I don't know a whole lot about them or their story. It hasn't been a cakewalk for them either. Their mother died in October and mysteriously, and she was shot at the week before. And then their dad married Lori two weeks after their mother died and they found out which is clear that Chad was cheating on Tammy and now their dad is in jail and Tylee and JJ were found buried on their dad's property so that's not easy for them either so I do have compassion for what they're going through as well it is not an easy road for anybody that is close to either of them and for a lot of people, it's really hard to separate the parents' actions with the kids because there's so much emotion around this. But just because Lori and Chad did what they did, in whatever capacity that is, it doesn't make the kids guilty. So I, I just want to remind you of that. It's hard sometimes, isn't it? We've got to remember there's people with feelings. So... So let's have a chit chat below. What are your thoughts on Chad's not guilty plea? Let's send some love to Colby and to everybody who loved Tylee and JJ. Please subscribe, like, and share. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.